Atlantis Beach is the location for Event 3, Murder Ball. A new event, so how do the strongmen feel about it? I don't know. I haven't tried this event before, but, but I feel confident. I can still get in the final and I hope to do well. And the first to show us how the earth moves, Fleming Rasmussen, who's got a 25 kilo body weight advantage over Forbes Cowan. That giant globe which is weighted down with about 100 gallons of water has to be pushed out of the circle in your opponent's half and it's the best of three rounds that takes you into the final. Off we go, and it's Rasmussen with the globe just over the advantage line. It's as simple as that, 1-0 to Denmark. Fleming Rasmussen, believe it or not, a former national 10-pin bowling champion of Denmark. I bet he threw the balls down the alley at an almighty speed. But now Forbes Cowan on the right, looking a little more serious. He must win this one, or it's straight into the playoff for third or fourth place. It's desperate for the Scot. Fleming walks this one out of the circle, and he's gone into the final. A suggestion there of a shoulder injury for Forbes. But this is how Denmark did it. And now Rasmussen will meet either Varalati or Leffler in the final. You think weight is important? Yeah, weight and long arms to control the ball. If you've got long arms, you can feel where the other, the other competitor is going. Marco is a very big man, though. Yeah, but I'm, I'm 30 pound heavier. I'm going to kick him out of the ring. Well, certainly there's no lack of confidence for Fleming. But as he mentioned earlier, long arms are very useful in this event, and nobody has them longer than Marco Varalati, who goes up against Curtis Leffler. I must say, Varalati is looking more and more impressive, and Leffler is on his way out. Varalati's coach, Marco, there says, well done. Well, if there's going to be a repeat of that speed and aggression, Varalati is going to stroll into the final. Ready. Leffler finding the sort of rough and tumble here very difficult, and here he goes again. 2 0 to Marco. There's Ilkan Nemistu, a former Finnish strongman. He gives the thumbs up to his protege, who is getting more and more confident. Curtis Leffler back out in the arena against Forbes Cowan for the fight for third and fourth place. And already Cowan is one up on the Hawaiian. This tranquil beach, the ideal spot for relaxing. But Curtis with two last places so far needs something special here. And Forbes Cowan can't afford to relax too much with Rasmussen breathing down his neck. Curtis is looking better here. Forbes just leaning on the globe. It's even Steven so far. Leffler, the muscle man. Cowan, the hard man and the grafter. Now, can Leffler get this giant ball on the move towards the edge of the circle? It looks as though he can. This is going to be his first success. And both men look absolutely shattered. The crowd now waiting for the decider. And referee Doug Edmonds waiting patiently to preside over this final push to see who will take third place. There was a grueling contest last year in the pole push when Forbes looked totally wrecked afterwards. And this is turning out to be the same sort of situation. Well, Forbes taking the early initiative. It looks as though this one could finish quickly. A win for Forbes Cowan and a precious two points which the Finn knows will be important to the final result. I don't think Curtis Leffler will forget his experiences here in a hurry. He gets another single point. Forbes, did you want to get that over and done with as quickly as possible? I had to get that one finished quick because there's just nothing left. I don't seem to be recovering. Whether it's because I've put on too much weight or because of the heat, but I'm really finding it hard. This is a very important bout for Fleming Rasmussen because if he can win, he closes the gap on Forbes to within one point, which means a nail-biting finish to this fourth heat. Varalati is guaranteed three points minimum, so the Finn looking a safe bet for the final, but Fleming certainly a new find as far as strength contests are concerned. And Marco continuing where Riku Kiri left off last year, but look at this, it's Fleming with a rush who wins. It looks as though Rasmussen's greater aggression and body weight put paid to Varalati's will to win here. It was Rasmussen who said he was going to kick his opponent out of the circle. He's done it once. Can he do it again? 
Both men are very agile and quick on their feet for such big guys. There's over 270 kilos of muscle on display here in a contest which is burning up the calories very quickly. They're training very much based on short bursts most of the time, so any prolonged effort hits them really hard. It's Fleming who wins this one for his first ever win in Strongest Man, and boy, did he work hard for it. A head-to-head -head contest which he delights in winning. Well, Curtis Leffler's struggling and only third place for Forbes Cowan, who must be disappointed. Fleming Rasmussen needed points, and this time around, he's got them. Fleming, you needed to win that event to have a realistic chance of getting through to the final tomorrow, and you did it. Yes, uh, a, se a second place could be all right, but then I have to be real good tomorrow. So. I th this this was my event. I feel very good about it. I think I have control all the time of the, of the globe. So. so Fleming quite literally on a roll to close the gap on Forbes, with Marco a further point ahead of last year's finalist. Who will qualify for the final is now anybody's guess. Thanks for tuning in to World's Strongest Man on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can catch all the up-to-date information and stay tuned on how strong and pretty I am, obviously. Don't miss it.